What is good? Welcome back to another show. I'm Sid and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this effect which is basically using the ripple patch in Spark AR to add some liquid effect ripple type things to your filter. Yeah, that was a poor description but hopefully you get the gist just from looking at it. There's a little bit going on in the patch editor, so I'll break some of that down and explain what's going on as we work our way through it. With all that being said, don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video useful, subscribe to the channel, share it somewhere, I don't know, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so here we are in a new project. I've switched it over to 2D mode, opened up the patch editor, and next we're gonna add an object to our scene. That object is a rectangle, which will appear nested inside of this canvas. We wanna fill the height, and we wanna fill the width. So make sure that you've got both of those filled and then we're going to add a material layer. I'm going to rename this to water and I'm going to rename the material to water mat just to distinguish between the two. Next thing we need are some patches. So head down here to the library, go to patch assets. We're going to be using the ripple patch. So type that in and import it into your scene. We're also going to be using the texture distortion. So type that in and you'll be able to select that and import that as well. Now we're gonna head up here to our camera and we're gonna add the texture extraction, camera texture, which will appear down here. And I'm gonna drag that inside of our patch editor. Now from the RGB A output of this, we're gonna add an unpack patch, which by default is set at vector three. So hit that drop down menu, change it to a vector four. Now from the Y output of our unpack, we're gonna connect a pack patch and I'm gonna disconnect that and move it down to the second input. And then I'm gonna change this from a vector three to be a vector four as well and we're gonna connect the Z to the third one and the W to the fourth one. Now, what we're gonna do is drag from this X output, the first one of our unpack, and we're gonna connect a divide patch. They all jump miles away from where they should be. And now from the output of our divide, we're gonna to connect to the top input of our pack patch. So now we should have something that looks like this. Now we're gonna grab a value patch and connect that to another pack. This time it's gonna be a vector two, so switch that out from vector three to vector two move it over, make a little bit of space. And from the vector output of this pack, we're gonna add a 2D transform pack. Now I'm gonna create a texture transform here, and I'm gonna connect from the 2D transform output to the transform input of our texture transform. And I'm gonna take the output from our pack up here, and I'm gonna connect that to the texture input. So it's all linked up now, looking pretty good. Still can't see anything, but I'll zoom out a bit, and we're gonna do some more stuff down here. So now we're gonna drag our texture distortion patch inside of here. And I'm gonna connect from the texture transform output to the texture input of our texture distortion shader patch. And now we need our water material texture. So grab that and connect that up here to the final output of our texture distortion shader. And now we can see ourselves again. Things are looking a little bit better, but we haven't got ripples yet. So now we're gonna take our ripple patch, drag that in here as well, make a little bit more space, zoom out. And now I'm gonna connect from the ripple output to the distortion texture input here. And you can see the ripple effect already there. It's looking kind of cool, but it's not exactly what we're after. So now we're gonna animate that ripple by adding a loop animation. And I'm gonna connect from the progress output here and add a multiply patch. And from the output of our multiplier, we're gonna connect that up to the scale. So you can already see something cool is happening. Not quite the effect we're after still, but it's kind of cool. The duration's set at one, so it's happening very fast. I'm gonna adjust that so that it's five instead. It takes five seconds to go through this entire loop. And I'm also gonna mirror it so that it will now do the loop and then loop back on itself rather than starting from scratch, which is kind of jarring. We can also make adjustments to this multiply patch. So if we change the second value here from one to two, then you'll see it has a little bit more of an extreme reaction to this loop animation. We can make it 1.5, make it a little bit less extreme. Still kind of cool though. And we can even change the color of our camera. So if we wanted, we could come in here to this divide patch and change the second value here from one to two, and that will give it this nice blue ocean vibe. You can increase that even more to change the color, make it a little bit stronger. We could go all the way up to five. I like five actually, that's pretty cool. So I'll leave it like that. You can see it's taken shape now. We have the ripple effect, it's kind of, working in a way but not exactly like waves and we have this cool blue color. So next up we're going to click this small icon here on our texture distortion shader which will open up all of the patches inside of it and you'll see this fragment stage here which is connected to this add patch. So we have our water attribute with the textures coordinates, fragment stage and what I'm going to do is drag out from there I'm going to add a subtract patch and if we connect from the output of this to the first value, then we'll just reconnect that loop in between. So now we have fragment stage, subtract, and add. And we can change this value to be something like 0.5, and it will jump all over the place. It's a little bit nuts. I'm gonna change it to be 0 
uh, and I think that's looking a little bit cooler now. So we can head back to the main patch editor. And now I'm just gonna change some of the values of our ripple patch. So if we zoom in here, then you'll see we have this shift X and shift Y, shift smoothness. These are the values you wanna to adjust to play around with the shape of the wave. So if I take this shift Y, for example, and turn it from zero to 1.5, then you'll see it's a little bit bouncy. It has more of a liquid effect rather than that swirling pattern that we started with. And we can increase the smoothness here from one to two, and that'll just even everything out. Uh, and it does kind of look a lot more like water now. I think you'll agree. I'll increase that again to something like 3.5, makes it more subtle, increases the smoothing. And again, you can just play around with this. You can increase that to three. It'll be very fast ripples if we go all the way up to 10 basically just to do twitching underwater. So we'll go back down, we'll go back down to 1.5 on that, leave that at 3.5. And one final thing I'm just gonna show you real quick is this value patch here, we can connect a loop animation to this. So if we create another patch for loop animation and connect from the progress to multiply, create a second one of those. And now if we take this output and connect it to the value input here, then it will actually animate the person on screen while all of this is happening. So I can change the duration to be something like 7.5 seconds, mirror that so the guy's going off screen and then coming back. And then we can adjust this second value again in our multiplier if we drop it down to 0.5, for example, then you'll see it's a little bit less extreme. The guy's kind of moving to the left, moving to the right, just kind of a bit more liquid. But uh, yeah, you can play around with these values, 0.1 maybe. Just have him slightly off center and then heading back, gives it a little bit more richness, makes the effect slightly more realistic. Now I'll switch over to the FaceTime camera Hey, what's good? Here I am. And you can see the final result. Uh, it looks a little bit trippy, I think. Uh, you can see it looping back on itself if I let it sit here long enough. So it'll bounce me around a bit, go all the way down, and then finally it'll reverse and start waving itself back up. And like I say, you can play around with all these values. You could change this one to be something like three. It'll make it very, very extreme. You can go back, change this one to be one, and I'll just start sliding off the screen. Uh, and you can adjust this value here to change. Why is this 53 and this shouldn't be? We'll go to five uh, and you can change the color of the blue. So you can drop that all the way back down to one to go normal, increase it slightly or go up to something like 10. And there you go. That's pretty much the entire effect. I'll zoom out so you can see all the patches we have. So basically we have our rectangle here, which is named water and we have our water material texture. This is connected from the camera texture here through the unpack the pack with this divide in the middle for the color change. Uh, and then that comes through to these two loop animations. One of them is affecting the ripple and the actual distortion itself. And the other one is affecting the main camera texture. So connected up here to the texture itself. Uh, and you can disconnect this if you don't want it to move around the screen or you can just leave it reconnected. I like it the way it is. I think it's pretty cool. That's gonna do it for this video though. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know I don't make that many anymore. I used to make a lot more videos and I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. So if you enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, comment. I'm working on a lot of new videos right now. Um, my favorite filter series is doing pretty well. I have a couple episodes of that ready to go. So stay tuned and yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.